Uh, hi everyone, it's Nina Collins here at the Wolfer. Um, today I'm in conversation with Veronica Chambers, um, who I'll tell you all about. She has a big job at the time. She's a writer I've actually known for a long, long time. So welcome. Hi. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah, it's really good to have you. So I was just, before we got set up, I was, um, we were just talking about the fact that in the 90s, when I was a scout and Veronica was starting her career, she wrote an amazing book called Mama's Girl, which was a memoir about growing up in New York. And yeah. I remember it really vividly, actually. I reminded myself today, I looked it up online, but I remember all of it, like you going to Simon's Rock and uh, the mother character and the father character. It, wow. it really... Um, it really left an impression on me. And Veronica told me right before we started that she's not sharing her age, which I was mocking her for, but we're basically the same age. She might be a teeny bit younger than me. I can't remember. But um, I remember seeking her out in the 90s uh, when I was a scout um, to talk about her book. And may maybe it was when I became an agent. I can't remember. But anyway, um, since then, Veronica's written, I think, dozens of books. She's edited and written many many books, including one on Beyonce. She edited an anthology about Beyonce, which I love. Um, and she worked, if I recall, you worked at the Times years ago, but now she's back at the New York Times. Um, yeah. I think you started two years ago editing the Past Tense feature yeah. and she just got a huge promotion um she's now editor comma narrative projects which is yeah. like a dream title and i want to hear yeah. all about it um so my understanding is you're steering special projects for the times and the reason we're particularly excited to just talk to you today is because we want to really promote this um event which is launching tomorrow night um it's called unfinished work finish the fight and it's a project about kind of the un told stories of suffragettes, the lesser known stories. And Veronica, oh, there you go. Veronica has written a young adult book around this story and they've created a special, well, she'll describe it because I don't know, I haven't seen it yet, but it's a play that's being done um, online tomorrow night. I think it, wait, let me look. Is it 7 p.m., 8 p.m.? 7 p.m. Eastern. 7 p.m. Eastern. We will post the link um, when we post this article. Uh, I mean, this, uh, this video. And um, so, yeah, so, Welcome. I think my first question is just yeah. how cool that you're the editor of Narrative Projects. Like, what does that mean? I know. It's one of those titles. I always wanted a super cool title and now I have one. Well, um, it really means that the projects that I do aren't just stories in the paper. So we did, for example, on suffrage, we did a young adult book and then we did this print special section, which published yesterday, I was going to say Sunday, it feels like so long ago, but it was 44 pages and we had posters and all this kind of stuff. It was really great. Oh, um, oh I, I have it here. I'd love um, to see it. Oh my God. How, how women won the right to vote and um, the, it says the battle for suffrage was waged by an army of women. It took nearly a hundred years. Victory was never promised. Um, and so there's like four posters in it, all these archival photos. And then we also did a play. There's an amazing playwright named Ming Pfeiffer. She um, wrote a play called Usual Girls, which won a number of awards. And then there's this great playwright named Whitney White, who is a young black woman who just won an Obie this year, as well as the Lily Award. She's amazing. So we went to Whitney and she brought in Ming and they actually developed a stage play based upon five of the women of color suffragists in our book. And so it's Jovita Idar, who was Mexican American and lived on the border in Texas. She was also a journalist. Um, it is Mary McLeod Bethune. It is, um, wait, I have to get all the women right. Um, it's Zika Lassa, who's a Native American wow. activist and suffragist. Um, Frances Ellen Watkins Harper, an African American suffragist and Mabel Pingwa Lee, who was a 16 year old Chinese American suffragist. And what was so cool, like when the section came out yesterday, one of the comments I loved, there were so many people on Twitter saying, I never even knew about Asian American suffragists. And so yeah. I just love that all these names are getting out there and that people are looking them up and it, you know, just yeah, it's really talking cool. about the mix of people. So there's amazing actors in this, um, production, so Leah wait, Lewis. Me, yeah. I want to interrupt you for a sec because I looked up the two young women you're working with and they're women yes. and they look amazing and super young and really talented. So how wonderful that you 
found them. I want to know more about yeah. them. And then how long has this been in the works? Like, so you, did you conceive of the whole thing? Like we're going to do a book and we're going to do a play and yeah, well, last year when I was at the Times, when I was working at Past Tense, we actually did some stuff around the moon landing. One of the things was we happened to find two years ago a picture of a Black astronaut named Ed Dwight that none of us had ever heard of. And it said, you know, Black astronaut was set to go to the moon, has left the program. And it turned out we couldn't believe it, like literally randomly finding a picture. Um, and it turned out he was in the class and he's mentioned in um, Tom Wolfe's The Right Stuff. And he um, was supposed to be, he was a Kennedy appointee. And after Kennedy was murdered, he was actually taken out of the program. Mm -hmm. And um, so he's this amazing, he's still alive. He's a sculptor. Anyway, that kind of became my way into the 50th anniversary of the moon landing. And one of the things we did was we did a one night play based on the Times coverage. And that was at Town Hall. It was directed by Bartlett Scheer who did To Kill a Mockingbird. Sam Jackson was in it, um, all of these people. So we had, we'd had the history of doing that once before. Yeah. And so um, we thought, why not do it for suffrage? It yeah. turned out that Town Hall was actually started by suffragists, which I didn't know. And so um, we kind of had the plan that once we were done with the Young Adult book in January, or kind of on our way to being done, that we would, um, we would plan a play. So Whitney and I met in February. And yeah. our idea was to do a one night staged reading of an original play about women of color suffragists. And then, you know, three weeks later, we're calling each other and we're like, what are we going to do? <laughs> We're on lockdown, but it, it seems like it's going to work. I mean, it looks great, like a great idea to watch it online. And all yeah. these, these five characters, were all these suffragists working at the same time? Were they alive or was it vastly different time periods? They were vastly different time periods. But one of the things that I really love about the play that Ming wrote and the way that Whitney's directed this is that it actually allows them to be in conversation with each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, just to speak to the power of your platform and what you're doing. I think when women ask each other questions about how they do the thing that Mary Catherine Bateson said of composing a life, then you get powerful answers. And I think what's really great is that you get these five women of color and they're asking, they're telling their story, but they're also asking, how did you do it? How did you move past fear? How did you deal with this racism and the suffrage movement? How did you deal with the challenges of your own community and everything else? And so the women really connect and, um, and they range from the main character 16 to, you know, Mary McLeod, Beth Yoon, I think is in her fifties in the play. So it's a nice, um, really powerful range of I women and styles. Yeah, and where are you performing it live? Where are they doing this tomorrow? So um, the thing that Whitney came up with the idea is that she didn't want it to be like theater on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So what she did was she actually filmed each of the actors and then edited it together. Oh, so nice. it's almost like a short, it's, it's written as a stage play, but I think it'll read much more like a mm -hmm. short film and, um, and then afterwards, I'll do a talk back with Whitney and Ming about the play. And how long is the play? It's about an hour. Okay. So, um, that was one of the things that we ended up adjusting. You know, I think if it was live theater, we might have gone a little longer, but you know, people get Zoom burnouts. So. Yeah, no, of course. We're in the middle of planning a Wolfer weekend and we're trying to figure that out. I mean, there's only so much time you can spend on Zoom. Yes. And since you, you wrote it for the Times and then wrote a young adult book, is the play aimed at audiences of all ages? Like, how are you dealing with the young adult aspect of it? Because it's, it's a great opportunity for kids. Yeah, it's not, I don't think it's really a play for kids. I mean, my daughter is 13. So um, I, I mean, I think she'll love it because the women curse and it's a little, um, it's a little bold in theater, like in that way that, um, but it's not not safe for children. It's just, I think, maybe older kids. So. So great. And were there a lot of primary source materials for something like this? I mean, these are women I've never heard of. Probably yeah. a lot of people have never heard of. Yes. How um, is it? 
Well, I think what's really interesting is that um, Ming really did the research and she really looked into a lot of things like where the word suffrage comes from. And it comes from a term for prayer actually. And, you know, so she goes into both the women's writings, the writings about them. I mean, the great thing about having done a book and then fact checked a book is we had a lot of files. <laughs> right, right. You know? A lot of material for her to work with. But you're yeah. the one who did all the original research then on all these women. Yeah, so I actually co wrote the book with five other New York Times staffers. Okay. So Jenny Schusler, who writes a lot about history and intellectual life, Jen Harlan, Vivian Wang, who's based in China. Um, Sandra Garcia, who's in New York, and Amy Padnani, who created the Overlooked series. So mm -hmm. for you. Um, was, was it fun to work with that many people in a book? I mean, I guess you've done a lot of, you've edited a lot of books, so you're used yeah. to working. As yeah, I mean, I think I was a lead writer and I was a person to weave it all together. I think it was definitely hard. <laughs> you know, it was easy. It was great to see how different people drafted the chapters, but then kind of pulling it together. I, I was telling someone earlier today, there was this great moment when, we were sitting in a conference room and I keep thinking back to like sitting in small rooms with lots of people, you know, and like people, so many people that some people were sitting on the floor. And so um, when nobody was worried that the door was closed and that there was no fresh air, but um, we had a whiteboard and on it, we had the names of 60 suffragists of color, queer suffragists, um, working class women who were immigrant white women, Rose Snyderman, Margaret Hinchy, And we, we're like, okay, who do we write about in this book? And just to sit and like have done the work, yeah. to have that many names on a, on a board was really exciting because I felt like, I feel like the hardest thing when you come into something that people have been covering for, the fact is the people who write about suffrage have been writing about it for decades is you don't want them to feel like you got it wrong. And right, so of course not. Yeah. that's the hardest thing, you know, like, and so I felt like when we looked at the wall, we really made, we felt like we had a terrain and then we just made creative choices. Yeah. Have you heard from any of the descendants of these women? Um, we did a couple of pieces. The DC Bureau did a piece on some descendants of suffrage, just, and then we did one as well. And so we have like all the suffrage coverage is actually just at nytimes.com slash suffrage. Okay, and so, cool. um, and so we've interviewed them, we photographed some of them and, it's really amazing because I think the thing is, is that these are women who, you know, quite the opposite of our time did not do it for the gram. You know, like they, they did it knowing, not even knowing that history would remember them, especially right. when you go into the queer women, the women of color, the queer women of color, you know, the working class women. I mean, there's really um, no sense that this is something that they're ever gonna get like a claim or fortune for. So a lot of what you see in their descendants, I think, is this sense of holding the torch, knowing that their foremother had done something important, but not, and kind of waiting for the world to catch up to that. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, my, I don't know if you know, but my mother was a filmmaker, playwright, Kathleen Collins, whose work has been rediscovered in the last five or six yeah. years. And it is, it's a very weird feeling to feel like someone was working and working and has no idea how much she's appreciated now. And it's a beautiful thing, these lost stories. Yeah, you know, it's funny because I, I think when I first met you, I didn't know anything at all about your mom. And then I started seeing the stories and, you yeah. Know. Yeah, it's been kind of an amazing, Just, it's just wonderful to think of. I mean, as I think Elizabeth Alexander wrote in the foreword to my mother's collection, this reading my mother's collection just made her think about all the stories that are lost. So hearing yeah. you tell this story is just another reminder of that, of like how many stories are we going to find and bring out? And Yeah, and you know, Elizabeth's great-grandmother was a major suffragist. Oh, wow, I didn't Adela know. Adela Logan Alexander, she's in our print section. We're going to do an overlooked on her and her mother... Adele Logan Alexander is one of the historians that we invited to this round table that wow. we did in December. But Adela Logan Alexander was a suffragist who could pass for white and she and her sister-in-law, who could also pass, would go to the white suffragist meeting and collect information and then take it back to the black suffragists. So, so cool. Amazing. So they have, um, they have quite a line of suffrage history wow. themselves, you know.
All right. Well, so we want everyone to watch this tomorrow night, seven o'clock. You can, I'll, we'll post the link. You just RSVP yeah. through the times. It's completely free and it sounds amazing. My yeah. other couple questions for you. I read in the press release about your promotion that A, it's based out of London. Are you moving to London? I am moving to London. Are you so excited? I am. I don't, I, you know, literally right before we got on, I was looking at a calendar and I was like, when am I actually going to plan my move to London and when am I packing? And, you know, like I just have so much work that I, I I don't know quite how I'm going to get there, but I'll get there. You live in New Jersey, if I recall, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. And um, like, why do they want you in London? And when do you have to be there? I just like people moving. I like stories like this. It's fun. Yeah, no, it's funny because I am, I am such a nomad. I, about three years ago, right before I joined the Times, I spent a year as a JSK fellow at Stanford. Mm-hmm. So we had done this whole thing of putting everything in storage and moving to California for a year. But that was a little less um, complicated. You yeah. know, so um, yeah. this is a little bit of a bigger move, I think. Um, I'm still going to be working with the team in New York, and I'm still going to be doing these kind of special sections and special projects and all that. But um, I think the hope is that I'll also get to work with some of the global teams. Mm -hmm. London is the biggest office outside of New York. And so there's just a lot of things I'm particularly interested in, you know, the connection of to Afropolitan culture Mm -hmm. um, and what kind of stories we can tell there as well as, you know, my family's from Panama and so I've spent a lot of time in Spain and I'm interested in kind of what kind of Latin and Spanish language stories we might be able to tell. Mm-hmm. I'm really interested in language in particular. And I, I, I'd i like to do more content creating in different languages. So this feels like a great start to kind of think about global storytelling, so. Yeah, it really seems like a fabulous opportunity and it makes sense like you'll be in a different place. It'll change, it'll shift your perspective. Yeah. And there is just more of a obviously orientation than there is here toward the rest of the world if you're in London. So that yeah. is really exciting. Can you give us, um, I don't know, any ideas of stories? Is there something you're working, what's your next big thing that you're working on as part of narrative projects? Oh, I don't, you, you know, suffrage has been, this has consumed like my past year and a half. So, um, and we're not quite done yet because mm-hmm. tomorrow is the ratification, but then next week, Tuesday is the certification. So it's when it actually becomes an amendment. Now I'm like the history nerd, um, <laughs> I'm total geek about it. But so next week, Tuesday, it's also equal rights day. And you know, the ERA still hasn't passed. So um, we'll be kind of in suffrage a little bit more. You're really um, living it. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm very excited to see what else you do. And thank, thank you for you. the time to do this. And I'm just really happy for you and impressed. Thank and we'll all watch it tomorrow and spread the word. Yeah. And please ask questions. And I'm just so happy to meet this community. Yeah, absolutely. We will. We'll be on there asking questions for sure. Okay. All right. Bye. Take care, Veronica.